Wouldn't it be great if I had some scandal for you? Like, like we all actually hate each other. <laughs> Season five is coming up for airing. Uh, what is something big you can tease for your character? I, got, I have a new job, and I, you know, I've, I've become more of like a businesswoman, and so that kind of affects my marriage in a bad way. He can't handle it. Yeah. John softens and deepens in these last ten episodes. You're the one with all the answers. Uh, what can you tease that's coming up in season five? Um, well, we are first of all going to answer the question about what that damn call was about. That you know, is getting the girls home from China early. And we go right into that in the premiere. You don't have to wait. Um, and that's a really compelling um, story that we, we carry through. Um, but I'm also really excited about, we're doing a, a story about race relations on campus inspired about what, um, by what happened last fall at University of Missouri and Yale and all of these um, stories about black students saying we're tired of the way we're being treated on campus and it's time for us to um, get some more professors who are black and all those kinds of things. So we're doing a huge story about that that I'm really excited about. 100 episodes, how does that feel? Amazing and bittersweet and if I could imagine my dream job switched to birth is the job. It's kind of hard to believe that it's actually rare for, that a show does hit 100 episodes. And now, you know, it has come time that we are done. And so I've been on the show for four years, and I'm extremely sad. But really, these people are like my family. So congratulations on 100 episodes. Thank you so and much. And also your directing. Like, how big of a milestone is that for you personally? Oh, it's a, you know, it's great. Like, you probably, you know, this might be the only time I ever do a series that like, gets to 100. I did Caroline in the City. We got to 98. Oh, so cool. So, so close. close. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, it's super exciting. And um, to be able to direct it is really exciting. I've done four Switch at Birth, so it was really nice that they gave me this one. It's very emotional. There's been a lot of crazy things that have happened on the show. For you, what was the most shocking or OMG moment throughout the whole series? Daphne did cocaine. <gasps> you guys, that Daphne was, yeah. got a high as crap. <laughs> <laughs> that was that's pretty shocking. It was oh my god, where oh she my came god. from at the beginning of the show. Yes, right. I would have never imagined that she would have that downward spiral. <laughs> you know, it's really fun sometimes too. In table reads, like you know, I'm always like, <gasps> oh my gosh. Um, the biggest one, uh, I, I think when we found out that Gilles was gonna die. When he died, that I just couldn't believe that they did that. That was very upsetting because we love him so much. I guess the heart attack when I when I had the heart attack, and it was an OMG moment to read the script and think, oh my God, they're killing me off. There's always that like, do I have to find a new job now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then sort of how that experience softened John and kind of reconciled him with Regina, which is I found very interesting. And I know um, a lot of people are sad now because we know the show is going to end. Right. Um, are we going to be satisfied with an ending that's going to happen? Yes, thank God. Um, the network gave us that news just, just in time. Just in time. Um, we're doing a 90-minute finale, a really special hour and a half one that's never been done by the network. They're, they're letting us really celebrate and land the series in a really full way. Um, we are The writers are upstairs right now. We're breaking it, and it's going to be something that every true fan of the show, I think, will really feel good about. If we were making a time capsule and we could only put one episode in to live on forever of Switched at Birth, what would it be? Like, What's your favorite episode of all time? The all-deaf episode. Easily. Oh, but also... The alternate reality episode. Oh, between those two. Probably the best moment or episode was when Daphne realizes that Travis didn't have any friends or family and she decided to be involved in his life. That's probably one of my favorite episodes and moments. I guess the best episode is the all ASL one because it's never been done. Probably will never be done again. I don't. I don't. I can't imagine a world in which that would happen again. Um, I, I mean, I wish there would be, but the fact that we did an all silent episode was pretty cool. The all sign language episode. Um, it was something that's so baked into the premise of the show that was so scary to do, um, and it's it's so universal. It's about kids fighting for themselves. It's also specific to, to deaf students. Um, I just really love that episode. It's called Uprising and it's in season two. The pilot. I think the pilot basically shows you what this show is about. Not that we repeated the pilot every time, but the pilot did such an amazing job of highlighting everything this show wanted to be about. What is something people might be surprised to know about this show that they might not know? 
wouldn't it be great if I had some scandal for you? Like, like we all actually hate each other. <laughs> People don't know about this show. I think, I think honestly, I think people when they, if anybody were to come see the sets, I think they would be amazed. Like our sets are the Taj Mahal of sets. I'm actually it's, pretty it's ridiculous. Surprisingly, I've never been to this set, which is right? shocking. That's usually um, in the other yeah, stage, but we, nice. they like built a gigantic house that no one lives in. That we should take you. When we you sh leave, I should right? take it with Speaking me. Speaking of that, uh, is there anything that you got your eye on from set when you leave? I have a couple squirrels of Catherine's. You already have them? I, what? No. Oh. <laughs> there's nothing on camera. Well, my character's obsessed with squirrels, yeah, which is a whole ton over yeah. there. <laughs> so I'm hoping I can take a squirrel when the just show's one? over. Yeah, like just, just one. I got a lot of stuff. I don't need stuff. But I might take some of the fencing. Yeah, I need some yeah, fences. Right? Just take the whole house. I would, this is pretty nice. I here, know. Right? It's super sad when they take these things down. It's just like so sad. And they do it so fast. They do it right away. Oh, wow. They don't even give you like a minute to process. No, no. I mean, it's crazy. I've done plays when like the curtain goes down, the audience leaves, the last person's out. They're taking the set down. I do. A paperweight from my desk. It's sort of funny because it's a paperweight that the camera guys always have to move because it's always in the way of the shot. Okay, so it's like... It's it always scene, moving right? around. It's never in the same place. And can you take us back to like the casting process and what was it about like Vanessa and Katie that really stood out to you? I do. I remember all of their auditions so well. I remember what they were wearing practically. Oh, wow. I really do. Um, uh, well, we um, we were of course quite nervous about casting the part of Daphne because we needed someone not just who was deaf or hard of hearing, but also who spoke sign language or you know. Uh, say Spike, who, who fluently signed, um, and who also would look like Leah Thompson. So there was quite a lot of, you know, Venn diagram we had to hit, and it was a little bit of magic that we found Katie LeClaire. So did we, you already have the adults cast first, um, We knew we wanted Leah, um, and that was just a, a huge get for us, of course. Um, Constance was the first role that we cast, yeah. Um, I wanted Regina to be fluent in sign language, and she was the f only person who we would cast who would not, who would be hearing, who wouldn't come, like, you know, other deaf, deaf actors would come fluent. So we knew we had to cast her first in order to get her in with the tutor and have her master the language. That was intentional to cast Regina first. Um, so Constance, and then DW just nailed it, you know. He was just had the right combination of gravitas um, and... Um, and warmth, but just really sort of your classic dad and an amazing actor. Um, those are our three parents. Um, and then, yeah, Vanessa, um, she was on a short list from the network. They gave her to us as someone that we might want to look at. And um, she is part Latina, which we needed to do for authenticity as well, to cast as a Vasquez by blood. So we were just, just incredibly lucky for all that. Sean, we cast off of a tape. Um, we... Um, searched all over the country. We had an open casting call for anyone who wanted to come in, non-actors. Um, and Sean was at a deaf school in, I think, Indiana at the time, and he sent in a tape, and we were like, "That's that guy is incredibly charismatic. Let's meet with him. And he flew himself out, and then we met with him in person. And anything you want to send out to the fans that have watched the show? I just want to say thank you so much. Um, like I said, it's my dream job, and I am so incredibly thankful for the support along the way, and on to the next one.